everyone, it's Eva Talley again from the Plast Van in My Kitchen, and I want to send a shout out to our sustaining sponsor, Brascom. Thanks for your continued support of excellent education that changes the perception of plastics one classroom at a time. I want to give you all a heads up. There will be a Plastivan trivia quiz at the end of this program. And uh, so please be ready. You can use the chat function at the bottom of your Zoom screen too, if you have any questions about the SBE Foundation or the Plastivan. We want to hear from you. Now I have a confession. This is what I wear most days until my first Zoom meeting or until lunch, whichever comes first, in case you were wondering. Okay, some days it's dinner, if I don't have a Zoom meeting. And is there anyone else out there that has the Commodore song, Zoom, playing endlessly in their head? If you're old enough, you will remember that song from the 70s. And as some folks, specifically an EB member who shall remain nameless, likes to remind me, I'm very old. So it popped into my mind a few weeks ago and hasn't left yet. If you're not familiar, type it into YouTube and join my crazy. And take that off. Actually, my confession is that I'm an engineer that works in the plastics industry. Sometimes it feels like a confession, right? And I've even been reluctant to tell certain people in my life that I lead a program that educated over 24,000 students in calendar year 2019 about how important plastics are. But we are in a crisis, which usually means there is a danger right now it's the virus, and an opportunity. Right now it's changing the narrative around single-use plastics. So I'm confessing that I'm an engineer in the plastics industry. At Plastivan, we utilize the opportunities that we get. We did it when marine debris became a huge global issue. At that time, we developed the Plastivan sustainability curriculum, which helps untangle the causes, propose solutions, and work in progress toward mitigating marine debris as well as teaching location-specific recycling practices, and it also has a unit on biopolymers, all things that resonate with stakeholders who are suspect of plastics. This new curriculum helped us to get gigs in Portland, Oregon, and Los Angeles, California, and we had great success getting students and teachers alike on board with our narrative. We've got that opportunity again around single-use personal protective equipment, PPE, which is being used and is in many cases in short supply for our frontline workers in healthcare and other essential service industries. This idea came to me from my husband, Mark Richardson, also my cameraman today, also in his pajamas. Thanks, Mark. From now on, when someone gets a bit testy about single-use plastics, and this conversation will come around again, we need to ask the complainer to clarify what they're speaking about. My first response is going to be, oh, so are you talking about plastic face masks, gowns, and gloves that saved countless lives in the COVID-19 fight? Those are all single-use plastics. Or are you talking about this water bottle? I live only a few miles from Flint, Michigan, and there are people there who still don't have potable water and wouldn't have water to live without single-use plastic water bottles and jugs. And let me remind you that this may be a single-use package, but it is not a single-use material. What we need to do is get infrastructure and carrots and sticks in place to make sure that this water bottle gets recycled. Let's focus that on together. Did you know that as of 2017, bottled water became the number one consumed beverage in the U.S. with an average of 3.9 million bottles an hour consumed? That's 34 billion bottles a year just in the U.S., just water, not soda and juice. On average, we recycle about 30% of these. That leaves 24 billion water bottles that are not recycled. That's a lot of material and a lot of money lost, especially as companies are working toward their 2025 sustainability goals, and many have promised to use more recycled content. The recycling infrastructure can't support the goals of all the major bottlers of water, soda, and juice in the US. The Plastivan teaches students all of this and the life cycle of a water bottle, from preform to injection blow molding and on to the recycling logistics and processing. Some classes even get a demonstration of the float separation of water bottle flake and caps. My point is that our completely essential industry is under attack by groups who like to use an environmental problem whose fault frankly lies with us all, I mean the collective all, and it's time to arm ourselves with calm, rational, 
and emotion-backed arguments. This current crisis is as emotional as it gets, and we have the right to utilize the life-saving power of single-use products in our discourse. The anti-plastic environmental discussion will circle back when the pandemic calms down, and our detractors are working up their story as we speak, and we need to be ready, proactively shaping our logic rather than reactively arguing with them. We have always had data on our side, now we have data and emotion and we must use it. All right, I wanted to shout out to a few young engineers and scientists who may be watching this morning. So hi to Ben and Tessa in Michigan, Henry in Pennsylvania and Eamon in Massachusetts. This bunch is sure to yield us an engineer or two or three. Thanks for watching guys. Now I'm going to pull some nylon for you. Nylon is a thermoplastic in the family of polyamide polymers. It is a condensation polymer since a molecule of water or hydrochloride is formed for each extension of the polymer chain. The reaction is between hexamethylene diamine in an aqueous solution and sebaceal chloride in hexane which is a relatively low density organic liquid. These two liquids are immiscible, which means that these two liquid, liquids, when added together, will not mix. And the reaction, the polymerization, the creation of the polymer nylon will happen at the interface. We are seeing a bit of an off-gassing of the hydrogen chloride. This is my polymer extrusion and acquisition device here, which you can buy at any office supply store, and it needs a little adjustment. The water layers on the bottom, the sebaceal chloride and hexane is on the top, and look at the cloudy interface at the surface. And I'm pulling up a tube of nylon. In 1927, Wallace Carruthers, no, oh, it broke. Wallace Carruthers, led a research group at DuPont, and that he was tasked with finding practical applications for their chemistry. The invention of nylon, the invention of nylon took 11 years. Well, this is not gonna to pull today very well. Said it's gonna glom. Maybe I can just do this and we can talk. It required a very complex manufacturing process. Designing and implementing that system is still used as a model for chemical plants today and helped um, to develop modern chemical engineering principles. Nylon was marketed as the first man-made organic textile fiber derived from coal, water, and air and was used almost exclusively to manufacture women's stockings. Well, on December 7, 1941, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor and we entered World War II. This is where we ask students to name our enemies in World War II, and we can usually get the right answers. Italy, Germany, and Japan. Well, part of our military strategy was to fly behind enemy lines and drop in on our enemies. Now I ask the class, what do we need to drop in on our enemies? That's right, a parachute. These were made from silk, which in the past we had purchased from Japan. It wasn't likely that Japan would sell us more silk so we could drop in on them, but we had application engineers and scientists who were working on the war efforts and they realized quickly that nylon, a strong and lightweight material would be perfect for parachutes. By February of 1942, all nylon production was redirected to war production. A funny story, after the war, the return of nylon production for women's stockings was a bit slower than anticipated, and there were numerous nylon riots as women fought over the limited supply. When I hear this story, I always imagine my grandmother and all of my great aunties duking it out over a pair of stockings. Supply and demand continued to be important. Take toilet paper, for instance. Over time, application engineers and scientists found many other uses for nylon. Let me ask you this. Have you ever come face to face with an airbag? Well, what do you think an airbag is made of? Nylon, that's right. 
It's a lightweight, extremely strong material that must withstand a contained and directed explosion that fills the airbag with nitrogen gas at a velocity of between 150 and 250 miles per hour. We also make seat belts out of nylon. So nylon is an important plastic material that keeps you safe in case of an automobile crash. Now let me show you some more cool plastics. But first, let me explain my kitchen. After my last live stream, someone commented on how bare my kitchen is. I confess that I had removed a few things for the show, but only a few. I tend to like a very minimalistic kitchen, and sometimes when Mark travels, I remove the things on the counter that he appreciates and that bug me, and I send a photo of the empty space with the caption, when the mouse is away. So today, I left the paper towels and the coffee maker on the counter to prove that I do use the kitchen. Now back to plastics. This is sodium polyacrylate. It is a plastic in powder form whose precursors were developed by the United States Department of Agriculture as a way to combat, combat drought. It was intended to be used as a soil amendment that would hold up to two to 300 times its weight in water. Don't look away, you're not gonna to wanna to miss this. Realizing that it might not be a good idea to put this in our soil as it might get into our drinking water, the polymer scientists, those scientists who like chemistry and develop new polymers with different and amazing properties to enhance our life, knew that a super absorbent polymer, such as this sodium polyacrylate, could be used for hygienic purposes. So they released it to a number of companies for further research and to find application ways to use it. In 1966, scientists at Dow Chemical Company invented this polymer, sodium polyacrylate. By 1982, a European company and a Japanese company put super absorbent polymers into a consumer product. I wonder if you could guess what it was. Any guesses? Right, it's a diaper. Procter and & Gamble and Kimberly Clark followed quickly in the US. You see, there are three layers of plastic in this diaper. The outer layer is polyethylene, which is the same plastic that a single use grocery bag is made of. And it keeps whoever's holding the baby dry hopefully. The middle layer is the sodium polyacrylate that we're talking about. Oh, where did it go? Right here. It absorbs the liquid in the baby's diaper. The third layer, the inner layer against the baby's bottom, is made from polypropylene. This is the same kind of plastic that most yogurt cups are made from. The interesting thing about this plastic is that it's hydrophobic. Let's look at that word so we can understand what it means. Hydro means water and phobic means afraid of. So a plastic that is hydrophobic doesn't like water. This is important for the inner layer of a diaper. When the baby wets, this layer says not interested and allows the water to pass right into the middle layer, which is hydrophilic. Now, what does that word mean? Remember, hydro means water and philic means love it, loves it. So our middle layer, our hydrophilic layer, loves the water and soaks it right up. If you were an application engineer or scientist, you would take cool materials like nylon or our sodium polyacrylate and try to figure out how it would best serve us in our modern world. Now let's look at this propylene, polypropylene inner layer. Here I have some right here. And remember, it's hydrophobic, which means it doesn't like water. But another interesting property is that it's petrophilic. We'll look at that word. You might remember that philic means loves it, but what does petro mean? Well, petro means oil. So this plastic, this polypropylene, loves oil. Now, if you were an application engineer and you knew you had a material that loved oil, but wasn't interested in water, how could you use that to make the world a better place? Well, let's think oil spill. You probably are aware that sometimes the companies that drill for oil have massive accidental spills in the ocean. This is very detrimental to the environment and the animals and humans in the environment. For years, we struggled on the best ways to clean up the oil. We tried vacuuming it, but would end up vacuuming up some of the water. We tried using cellulose to soak it up. Think big paper towels, but again, we absorb too much water. In comes this hydrophobic petrophilic material, polypropylene. Let's see how it works to soak up oil. Here I have the ocean, and here comes the oil spill. Yeah. 
it floats on top. And why is that, class? Yes, because oil is less dense than water. In goes our polypropylene. It absorbs the oil and leaves every bit of the water. You can see that. There's the oil, no blue water. This is one of my favorite demonstrations. So scientists and engineers working to clean up the ocean might make big booms, large rolls of this polypropylene and surround the oil spill. And when the plastic is saturated, they would take it and extract the oil by spinning it and reuse the plastic booms again and again until the spill was contained and cleaned up. Now they would save the oil they extracted. It's a valuable non-renewable resource. And at the end of the cleanup, they would either recycle the plastic booms or possibly burn them in a very controlled environment that didn't cause pollution to get the energy value out of the plastic. How cool is that? These are just a few of the plastic materials that we discuss in our plastic van visits to get students interested in our industry. Most students have never thought of materials and how they affect their lives in so many ways. We talk about sports applications, medical applications, packaging, automotive and general transportation applications, and electronic and gaming applications. We use emotional tugs to get students to listen and care. Nothing gets a kid's attention about the importance of plastics better than informing them that their phones would not exist without plastics. We must make it about them and their lives and then spark their interest in the problems we face as a society, inviting them to join us in innovation. And yes, we do talk about the great salaries available too. Well, back to our current crisis and the opportunities that many of us are taking advantage of. I like to look for the silver lining. This new way to meet for a technical conference has taught us all so much. No longer are we wary of Zoom meetings, of showing up on video looking less than perfect, note my pandemic hair and chipped tooth with no dates scheduled to get this under control. I'm one of the lucky ones with good health and adequate food and shelter and TP, so the tooth and hair are no big deal. The whole online world seems kinder and more patient and more relaxed, and I hope you're experiencing the same as I am. Those are the silver linings that I choose to embrace. I can't visit my mom in her nursing home where C19 is present, but I am calling her every day, which is something I never have done before. Last night, she asked for a striped pajamas for Mother's Day because she feels like a prisoner, and we had a laugh over that. The other opportunity that the Plastic Van is embracing is expanding our offerings of online plastics education. In March, April, and May, we have canceled 53 school visits and eight Plastic Van events, resulting in over $100,000 in missed revenue. The seven Plastic Van educators were effectively out of work. But we've been talking about creating online resources for a couple of years, but lack the bandwidth to get it done due to the growth of the program. So now is the time. For your immediate consumption, we have uploaded three short videos that you can enjoy with your kids or by yourself. Each video has a PDF listing learning objectives, vocabulary, pre-activities, post-activities, and resources. You can access those at www.plastivan.org. If you choose to take advantage of those resources and then tag us on social media, you'll be eligible to win one of these sweet Triton, that's an Eastman product, Plastivan water bottle. You'd be doing me a big favor. We had a lot of events planned this spring and my basement has boxes and boxes of swag. I want to share with all of you. And we will be adding resources to our website, so check back often. The other project we're working on is breaking our Plastivan Classic and Plastivan Sustainability curriculums into video modules. We will create video resources for different age groups, K through three, four and five, six through eight, and nine through 12. The catalog will be categorized into topics so that teachers can choose the most relevant resources for their classes. Topics will include chemistry, material science, careers, manufacturing, engineering, sustainability, composites, the history of plastics, and more. We're developing a strategy that continues growing our in-person, hands-on demonstration Plastivan program, or Plasta visits, as we call them in our development meetings, as our number one goal. Our online offerings, or Plasta videos, will be a supplement to increase our impact. There are many groups who would like a visit, but the economics don't work. Think scouting groups, 
homeschool groups, after school library programs. We think our program can help change the perception of plastics for those students as well. Our goal is to have these resources ready by the next school year, depending on our ability to meet and tape the modules professionally. In this way, many of you could take a module into your own child's school when you are asked to talk about your career. The Plastivan team has been working to plan and create these resources. We are looking for revenue to support the development. So what we will be doing is asking our current sponsors to convert their committed resources for Plastivan for this school year into support for this new initiative. Your gift will continue to be impactful to thousands of students. And I just want to thank you sincerely for sponsorships. We couldn't do this without your help. Now we have a Plastivan trivia quiz for you. Okay, Chris, we're ready for our quiz. Is the quiz up? If not, to get ready, you can go to kahoot.it and get ready for our quiz. Uh, pin number is 1278691. I repeat, 1278691. Am I still on? All right, so I think we're gonna get ready to do this. I hope everyone's um, heading out to kahoot.it. I'm in and can see my nickname on the screen. My nickname is Eve, apparently. I'm gonna take the quiz with you and hopefully I'll get them all right. Seems appropriate, doesn't it? Some of our offerings on our Plastivan website right now. Mark will let me know when the quiz comes up. Some of my offerings on the Plastivan website right now. Oh, here it goes. All right, question one, ready, set, go. So I won't be playing along. And because I couldn't see the question, I got it wrong. And it says I'm in 15th so, place. So I'll help you, I'll help you out. Uh, uh, the question was uh, how many US states All right, next had at question. least one Plastivan visit in 2019? What was the right answer? So some of the resources we have for you on plastivan.org, we have a recycling video by Elizabeth Egan, who was stranded in a cabin up north with very little resources to make such a great video. You're going to love that. It's going to teach the family how to recycle. Chris, are we moving on to question two? All right, here we go. Question two. All right, I got some help from my trusty uh, video guy over here, so I'm gonna get that one correct. Yep, I got that one right. And I actually mentioned that one in this presentation, so if you were paying attention, then you will have gotten that right. Last time I was on, which was April Fool's Day, and my April Fool's joke for all of you was that I was stranded in San Antonio because no one had told me that Antec had been canceled. And then I immediately said, April Fools, I'm here in my kitchen, but I did hear from a number of you wanting to know when I was coming home and feeling bad that I was stranded in San Antonio. So that was fun for me. I actually never went to San Antonio and Delta has graciously been willing to give me my money back. Oh, I'm in 13th place, 93 points behind Bruce. And I'm gonna guess that's Bruce Mulholland. We will be put, oh, here we go. Question three. Which of the following topics are included in plastic and presentations? Polymers in red, history of plastics in blue, recycling sustainability in yellow, all of these in green. All right, again, Mark has given me the question so I can play along. And I'm pretty sure I got that one right and you all should as well. One thing we're gonna do in the, I think next week at Antec is we're going to have a contest. Are you smarter than a sixth grade Plastivan student? So you'll wanna tune into that. We're working on questions that could stump the plastics professionals. Some of you early in your career and those later in your career, which at times I refer to quite lovingly as plastosaurs. So, 
tune in to the schedule to see when we will be having that. Are you smarter than a sixth grade Plastivan student? Some of the history that was in this presentation might be on that quiz. Oh, I'm 51 points behind JKP. I think I know who that is. I think that's Julie Proctor, who is our Plastivan program coordinator. Julie is the behind the scenes person that manages all of the scheduling, invoicing, and helping the educators manage all of their visits. She also is excellent at curriculum development, program development. That's, that's a sweet spot for Julie. She's amazing at that. And we could not do the program without her. The first year that I came into the SB Foundation and worked on the Plastivan, she was not with me. And by the end of that year, I was frazzled to say the least. Next question. Here we go. Okay, next question. My quiz said I'm on the podium. I'm not sure what that means. All right, I'm behind Bruce again. I'm pretty sure he knew that answer because the color and appearance division is one of our biggest sponsors and we do appreciate that support so much. All right, next question. All right, it's looking good. I mean, if I win and I have to send myself a water bottle, that's gonna be disappointing. All right, next question. Steve, I think you should throw this one just so somebody else wins. Oh, too late. <laughs> I'll give you a clue though. We don't usually do distillation in the Plastivan visits. It's not usually. All right, next question. Two more. Wait, I forgot to throw that question too. <laughs> Well, it's the app's fault. It keeps asking me, feeling competitive? That was quick. You're on the podium, so it's baiting me. <laughs> I'll throw this last one. Just so you know, Bruce, I'm sending you a water bottle. <laughs> okay, that last question. Thanks for staying with me for so long. This is new, but we'll get better at this. And thanks, Chris. Which of the All right, next section is on innovation on how to produce plastics from corks. It didn't want to take my wrong answer. It was going, oh, wait, I put in the right answer by accident. <laughs> I knew I was going to happen. <laughs> Sorry. All right, do we have a winner Be besides me? Who came in second? <laughs> I'm glad Connor I tried. did. I tried to fail, folks. I did. I tried to fail. Do we have a winner? What does it say? Two. <laughs> <laughs> no, but is there like a second place? Connor and then John. Oh, Connor and John. John who? I'll want to know so I can send you a water bottle. Oh, Connor, I'm going to send you a case of water bottles. <laughs> and you can distribute them as you like to promote the program. Am I in video again? Yes. I, all right. So please, John, whoever you are, reveal yourself in the chat window so that we can get you a water bottle. And Connor, I can probably find you. Hey, well, I just wanted to say it's noon, so I should be done. I just wanted to say thank you for hanging out with us and congratulations on those of you who answered some of the questions well. If you're interested in, in having Plastivan come to your hometown, we will start scheduling for the fall, you know, at the end of this school year. So keep us in mind. You can find us at www.plastivan.org. Oh, John was John Fellenstein. Oh, John Fellenstein. Well, John Fellenstein is one of our educators. So I'm proud of him for getting so many right answers. And John, I will send you a water bottle as well. Oh, and now Connor is actually hassling me by, by text, which is fun. All right, so that's it for me, you know, signing off, and I hope to see you next week in one of our cool networking, Are You Smarter Than a Sixth Grade Plastivan Student? I have my doubts. You know how competitive I am. <laughs>